All right, let's get started making the covers for the Next Size Down album. The, um, I believe I refer to it as the small album, even though it's not the smallest. Um, but remember, the covers for this is the ones that I made a boo-boo on the measurements. So uh, you need, if your page 35 looks like this, then you need it to look like this. So what you need to do is go to your purchase receipt on Etsy, open that purchase receipt up, and to the right is a button that says contact shop owner. Hit that button and all you have to do is type in your email address and I will send you um, the new version of this. So you'll have the corrected copy. I'll actually send you a whole new PDF file so that you don't have this page separate from the other one. So, um, so remember to do that and be patient because a lot of you bought it. So I, you know, I'm having a hard time keeping up with your all's emails. So um, I'll get them out to you as quick as I can. All right. Well, all that being said, let's um, get to the covers. So again, like I said, I fixed the covers. Yeah. You know, okay. Um, so I've already done one. It looks like this. It's pretty. So this is, what I did was uh, black chipboard. This is black chipboard. It's paper accents, and I'm not 100% not sure, but I believe I bought it at scrap a dap a do scrap -a -dap -a -do <laughs> com. <laughs> they, um, they seem to have good prices on their um, chipboard, but this was a while ago. I bought, I bought a pack of this, uh, I don't know, a long time ago, so... Um, so what I did was I took my page uh, 35, printed it out for the A4 size because um, it's a little, it's slightly smaller. So I had to change my printer settings to A4. So I printed it out, printed it out, I printed it out, printed it out, <laughs> I printed it out, cut it out, and then I just laid it down onto the chipboard, traced it out, and used a craft knife. Um, to cut it out. So I did both covers that way. Let me move that out of the way. And then page 13, if you want this quarter of an inch border like I do right here, page 13 actually will mat that cover perfectly. And page 13 is the insert for the side pocket. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I've, I've printed a template out in A4 size. So I am going to lay it down on my pretty paper and I'm going to trace it out and cut it out. So let's see. Um, where, what do I want on my cover? I think, oh, I got two pieces there. Do I want this part on my cover? No, I like, I like this. I'm, so I'm going to do it the same front and back. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down, get one straight edge at least, and I'm going to tr trace it out with my pencil. Whoa. And then where's the, I'm going to cut it out. I've noticed that when you're working with the A4 paper size, you do have to do a lot of that, laying things down, tracing it out, and cutting it out because you don't have all the leftover uh, cut off pieces and all of that. So you do have to do a little bit more tracing. So it's not so much sending through your printer, but more using the templates as exactly that, a template. So there's the mat. So it's gonna go right here on the front cover. I'm gonna ink it and it's gonna go on the front cover. Let me do that real quick. And I'm using archival jet black from Ranger and see the nice pretty clean lid this is my YouTube lid or this this is my YouTube lid this one here is what I usually work with <laughs> so trying to make it look prettier for you guys you can ink as heavy or as light I usually go in a hurry so mine usually looks you know, maybe a little sloppy, sloppier than necessary, but I don't care. I like it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the liner. I'm going to use this page for the liner. I'm going to do that off camera, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got them both cut. Um, I am going to put a closure on this album, and I'm going to use a magnet um, again, and 
I'm going to put it over under the cover here. I'm going to have a chain that comes over and there's, I'll show you. I'll show you in a minute. So first I'm going to put the liner on. Oops, looks like I tore that up a little bit. Oh well. And for the liner, I'm just going to use the tape runner. And I'm going to try to get a quarter of an inch all the way around. Best I can without getting my head in the way. Alrighty. So then what I'm going to do, where's it at? Here's my... This, here's my magnet. And remember, these are basic gray magnets. Um, I showed you a package of them in the last video. Or no, not in the last video. In the... Um, the flip of the large mini album that I made for my mom, or large scrapbook I made for my mom. Whoa, make sure it's the right way. Okay, so what this is, is, it, I think they call it a chandelier charm. And this little booger right here, on the very, very end, is a magnet. And you're supposed to, like, attach them to your light fixtures and stuff. And I'm pretty sure I got them at Hobby Lobby. I'm pretty sure. So, I thought I would attach a chain to it. And then that would be my closure. Um, it would attach to, I need to figure out which side it's going to attach to first. I think that one, that one work. Maybe. Yeah. So now I need to figure out how, where exactly I want to put it. So here's my chain. Um, it didn't come black. I had to make it black. And I've done a video on that already. Um, and it's, I think it's butterflies and flower paper clips or something, DIY butterfly and flower. Uh, I'll link it below so that you can go check it out. So I changed it to black and so it's going to look like this. Pretty much. That's what I'm thinking. Something like that. And of course the chain wants to go to the magnets too. But the one magnet will be underneath there. And then I'm going to put some pretty flowers and stuff right here. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. So, I'm just going to guess where this needs to go. And I'm going to use a glue dot. Like that. Oh, no, not there, not there, not there. <laughs> not there. How about right there? And then this time I'm going to use a FiberTac uh, glue by Beacon because I want to be able to get a, uh oh, maybe not. Maybe I won't be. There we go. I want to be able to go around the magnet. And this will, you know, this will hold really good once it's dry where the tape runner may not hold as well once it's dry because with the magnet and stuff I just figured somebody was asking me about wet glue and uh, it depends on you know they're saying they're paper warped well this kind of glue here so the gel based glues do much better um, when it comes to paper it doesn't warp but white glues they will um, warp or wrinkle your paper most white glues will um, if you're light-handed with some of them, it doesn't warp so bad. And it really just depends on what you're doing. And it also depends on how thick your, your paper is. So this scrapbook paper, it's not super, super, super thick. Um, but I would still use Fabri-Tac Fabri instead of white glue just to be sure that it doesn't bubble and wrinkle. Because and, sometimes with white glue, you can see the lines. And who, who likes that? Nobody. All right, let's see. There. So that's where that's going to be hanging down. I don't know. It's such a tiny little magnet. It's hard to... Um, there we go. And then I'm going to have a chain attached to it. And then the chain is going to wrap around the side and go through the back. Oh, I have enough. Roll, roll. So it's going to go... 
I should. If not, I'll add some to it. So that's kind of the scoop on that. That's what I wanted to do with that. So I just want I needed to do that before I put the the mat down, of course. Alright. So let me get the stuff together for the next step and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Where's my thingies? I am going to use um, Olets. These are We Are Memory Keeper Olets, and they are um, cool metal Olets, cool metal colors. So these are the wide ones. So they're going to end up looking like this. Isn't that pretty cool? So I'm going to put um, three in each cover, and then on the back cover, I'm going to put one in the middle. So you're going to need, if you want to do it this way, you're going to need eyelets and you're going to need a crocodile or a hole punch. Um, you don't have to use eyelets. It works without eyelets too. I've done it before without the eyelets. Um, it doesn't look as nice, but it works. So, whoops. Well, that came off awful easy, didn't it? <laughs> okay. Let me get these open. I'm going to use these black ones here. Maybe I should have opened these before. I'm going to need seven of them. Hopefully there's seven in here. Oh, good grief. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. First thing we want to do is we want to mark our holes. I'm pretty sure we did center, two and three-fourths, two and three-fourths. Pretty sure. Yes, let me get the better ruler. So that's what I'm going to do. On the top cover, I'm going to lay my ruler down. And I'm going to line, find the center. That's not the center. Since the cover's a little bit bigger, you have to adjust for that and find the actual center. There we go. And where's my, um, I'm, I'm going to use my white gel pen again. And I'm going to mark the center. I'm going to go in, not a whole quarter of an inch, but I'm going to go in just a little bit because the hole is going to be pretty, pretty big. I'm going to mark it at the center. I'm going to mark it at two and three fourths. And I'm going to mark it at two and three fourths. Top and bottom. So the next thing you want to do is I'm going to use, I think I have to use the big hole. Yes. All right, so I want the bigger hole. So I'm just going to, let's see how big of a space I'm going to need. I'm pretty sure I was pretty good about that. So I'm going to go up a little bit from my marking, but I'm going to put it right in the center. You probably can't see it, but just in case you can. And I'm going to punch out. All right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to line this back up like that. And I'm going to move this gauge on the side up to where up to where it um, meets the cardboard or the chipboard so that it will be the same on this side. So I'm going to line up the hoe, punch it. <laughs> line up the hoe, punch it. So before you put the um, the eyelets on, then what you want to do is you want to lay it back down onto your back cover, and you want to mark the hose using the hose you just punched. It's the easiest way I found to get them accurate. So you've marked those holes, then you want to come back again and tag numb it. And punch. So, uh, and then on the back cover, I'm going to put one in the middle. So that's where the closure is going to attach to. So same thing. I'm going to find the center. And let's see. Here we go. I'm going to mark it. And I'm going to punch the hole. This one I'm going to come a little closer to the edge, I think. Just like that. So 
So all you need to do now is take your eyelet and place it in the hole and use the other side of your um, crocodile and squeeze. And now there's that eyelet. And you know what, I'm, I'm, sometimes these don't open all the way. They're kind of, kind of rough. Sometimes I just take a hammer to them and just flatten them down. Um, I don't always do that, but sometimes. It would be nice if they made really good quality eyelets that had a, a back and a front. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the eyelets on the back cover. I won't beat and bang on the cover again on camera. <laughs> Sorry. So then squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. So those three are on. Now let's do the front. So now we got our front and back cover.